Hi everybody, Happy New Year. Welcome to this edition of My Chronic Migraine Life. Today I want to talk about 2020. What a year, right? For most people out there, and it was just the year that wasn't, right? It was just the year that everything sort of went in a way we never hoped or dreamed or feared it could go. But like most things in my life, I try to take the positive road, and there were many blessings in my life. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about what 2020 was like for me, what it meant for me. On the first episode of season two of My Chronic Migraine Life, it's just after the new year, first week of 2020, and I was in such good spirits. I was really feeling strong in my spirit. I was feeling physically well, um, and I just had so much hope and conviction that 2020 was really going to be my year as I suspect many of you out there also felt. I was just coming off of my turning 38. I had spent the holidays with my family. I was just really convinced that I knew what I wanted for my life and my health that year and what I was going to do to put all of my expectations into action. Um, but not long after I filmed that video, I realized that Right off the bat, when you're feeling your strongest, I had to conquer a fear of mine, and that was my eye surgery. Um, as many of you know, I had a double cataract surgery, one in the beginning of February and one in the beginning of March, and somehow, you know, you start off with all these things that you're going to look forward to, and like within three weeks of the new year, you're prepping for surgery. And now I was eager to get it over with and I knew that I was in competent hands, which is always important. And I knew that it was medically necessary in order to get to the next steps in my life and be able to see them and participate in them the way that I want. But something about having that looming over you right at the beginning of the new year sort of stuck. Not that there would have ever been a more positive time. Um, and I knew I needed the surgery for a long time and I was in the midst of planning it around the holidays and stuff like that. So, you know, it wasn't a surprise or anything, but having it right there in the front of the new year sort of stank. My thinking was to get it over with the sooner the better so that I could see, of course, and move on. What I didn't know then, and maybe it was a blessing, is that the interim between my eye surgeries would be much worse than I had anticipated. And so for the first three months of the new year, I sort of was in this weird mode where because my vision was impacted so badly um, and in the course of treating one eye and letting it heal to be recuperated enough to do the second eye and heal from that, I was in this weird limbo. I couldn't literally read or write, um, which is my livelihood. And so that, more than that, it's my passion. It's what fulfills my soul. I could barely use my cell phone, so I couldn't, you know, even do something mindless like scroll on Instagram or even share something positive on social media. And so I was in this kind of funk, I suppose. And while I knew I was doing everything that it needed to be done, it sort of altered the space that I was in, you know, from that go-getter attitude to this, well, I'm going to say it, depressive state and just sort of wanting to be numb. The ironic part of that story is that a week before New York City closed down on a, you know, self-imposed lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, I had just been, I uh, was just about to be cleared from my second eye surgery to start driving, to working out again, all those other things that I had really looked forward to. Um, it was about a week after my eye surgery when everything closed down. So right as I was finally getting to ready to emerge from this cocoon, self-imposed maybe, um, and, and really re-enter the world in a place, in a way that I hadn't been in a long, long time, longer than I would even realize at that point, the world closed and it was such a weird weird moment and like the rest of you I was terrified and scared and didn't know what it meant and there was you know all these runs on the supermarket and the toilet paper and 
small things and serious things and scary things. And just like that, I was locked back in my house physically, if not emotionally also. But during those first few months of quarantine, although I ached to see my loved ones and my friends and finally have a social life and be able to drive and do all those things that I had been waiting to do because I wasn't well enough, for lack of a better word, I found my ways to bring myself joy. I decided that I could still drive. I had been waiting such a long time to drive and drive by myself. So I finally did all those things. I took the pictures. I did all the things that I wanted to do. I was gifted a subscription to the New York Times newspaper, a real live newspaper, nothing digital. It is my favorite, favorite, I don't want to say guilty pleasure, but pleasures in this world. I'm old school. I like real things in my hand. And the New York Times paper is one of my most favorite things. And so as small as that may seem, being able to read, even if with over-the-counter reading glasses, and see it and hold it and enjoy it, I could cry right now. I won't, but I could. It was beautiful in that moment. I started to make a list of places that I've always wanted to see and photograph, but quite frankly, when the world was open, it was very hard to find a spot or be able to get the right angle. But with the world sort of shut down, it gave me this opportunity to go out, get some fresh air, drive, walk, and see the things that I had been longing to see. And ironically enough, I just had eye surgery so that I could see them perfectly. I was lucky enough to be quarantined at home with my parents, so I was never alone, even though my joke is always that there were moments where I wish I had more alone time. I'm just that kind of person. Um, but me and my mother explored my city. I went to Coney Island. And while it was eerie to walk the boardwalk with like only a handful of other people, it was beautiful to be by the ocean and feel the breeze and take a nice long walk and take all the pictures in the world. I finally got to go to the World's Fair site in Corona, Queens. It's a beautiful, beautiful park. I can't recommend it enough. And got some amazing shots and just really enjoyed myself. Um, when the world started to ease up a little bit and we felt safer, or I don't know if it was actually safer, but felt safer. In September, I actually even got to take a vacation this year. I went to Mystic to celebrate my mother's birthday and even spent a day in Rhode Island. Newport, Rhode Island is one of my most favorite places in the world. And I got to visit the Green Animals Topiary Gardens. And it's a place my mother and I have also been trying to go for a really long time. And the timing and the seasons never sort of worked out. And they were gracious enough to host us for her birthday. And that was awesome. And just have to have an amazing weekend away and feel safe and happy. Like the world was sort of normal, even though it wasn't. And we were still taking all the necessary precautions. It was nice to have that, that respite and in light of emerging spikes in coronavirus and all these other things that seem to be going, giving us, you know, taking us two steps back instead of two steps forward. I'm glad I had that moment in time. Um, but I guess aside from being brave enough, even when I didn't feel brave and certainly contemplated canceling my surgery aside from being proud enough that I accomplished it that I did what I needed to do for myself um my greatest achievement this year was finally after many many years and many many government bureaucratic hoops to jump through I got my trademark status the queen of fucking everything and my logo is officially trademarked so if any of you out there try to steal it I can sue you. <laughs> it was just a really a crowning achievement of mine. And it'll be the first of many things I trademark. And I didn't have the money when I started out to hire an attorney. I did it all by myself. And there were many, many points of frustration and having to redo things and figure things out and unexpected fees. And I navigated those waters. I hated it a lot of the time. But as I like to say to myself, it didn't have to be easy, but it has to be worth it. You know? And... 
It certainly was. And getting that piece of paper in the mail was another moment. Just thinking about even right now makes me want to cry. It was something I will always be really, really proud of and always really cherish. And so that was great. <sighs> Aside from, you know, a handful of really proud days and spending a lot of time in my kitchen and really elevating my cooking game and all those kinds of things, I felt like 2020 was a weird year for me in a different way than other people. While I was very blessed that my family stayed healthy, and even this past Christmas I got to celebrate with my immediate family and my birthday, and while that wasn't the way that we planned it, um, certainly feel blessed and inspired and grateful for what I had. I sort of am in this way feeling like 2020 was a lazy, unproductive year for me. And I don't know if that had anything to do with really the entire situation with the pandemic because I work from home anyway and my life didn't change so drastically and the way my everyday life goes. But I felt so unmotivated in my soul. I felt lazy. I felt like I just didn't know what I was doing and where I was going and if it was worth it or was I doing the right things in my career, in my personal life. And, you know, as I sit here and think about it now out loud, perhaps it was just because of the way that my year started. Maybe those first four months while there were sheer moments of joy and exasperation and relief, it sort of did something to me. Maybe I needed to go through a pause, if you will. And I feel like I'm finally ready to hit play again. And that being said, I've sort of made a decision and it, it feels like the right decision, at least for now. Speaking of pause, I am going to be putting a pause on these videos. Um, I don't want to say that I'm not going to ever do one again, and there's certainly a lot of topics and things that I still wanted to share, but I feel like this year was really intense with my health, and, and having to share it in order to process it has had my mind focused in a way that might have led to me being in this kind of funk where I didn't want to or couldn't turn off that part to focus on the other stuff. And I think that for my mental well-being, I have shared the most raw, important, educational truths about my chronic migraine life. And I think that one of the reasons I was so emotional at the beginning of 2020 was also because the ending of 2019 marked a very clear chapter in my life where my health was erratic and awful and scary and dangerous and wasn't letting me actually live my life. And I'm a very big believer in those, you know, chapters, the beginning and ending markers of things. I feel like it's one of the reasons I take so many pictures is to chronicle things. And it was a very interesting time. I was, you know, being stopping my daily preventative medications for the a whole first year already and you know finally accepting that maybe my migraines weren't ruling my life anymore what did that mean for me what did it mean for the rest of the things that I do and who I am and maybe I was having some kind of identity crisis and I feel like now in order to take charge and sort of accomplish the things that I want to do now the new projects that I'm really excited about and you know I always see people on Instagram saying I've been working on this for so long and I couldn't wait to share it with you well I have some things in the works that I will be saying the same things about hopefully very soon and while I don't really feel the full excitement of that now I'm sort of nervous and anxious about it I'm going to pursue them anyway and walk through those emotions to get to the other side and see the end result because it will be exciting and it will be worth it and so with that being said, I'm going to pause. I thought this was a good place um, 
in a wrap up sort of video to put this on hold. Uh, I will certainly still be on Instagram and social media and sharing about my chronic migraine life. But I think for once, or maybe the first time even, I am realizing that I am truly not my illness. My illness is not my most defining quality. And while many people will still come up to me and say, hey, I was talking to so-and-so and they have terrible migraines and it made me think of you, I will no longer feel ashamed or sad that that's the first thing they think of when they think of me. Because the other part of that sentence that they're not saying but are acknowledging is, I know somebody that was sick, is sick, sort of as seriously as you were sick, but you are the hope. You are the example that you can be at your worst and get better. That there's always hope. There's always something you can do to come out of it. Even if it's hard, even if it takes a really long time, and it takes a really long time sometimes. And even if you feel alone, and even if you have to start a YouTube channel to process your pain and trauma and realize what you went through and acknowledge it in order to let it go, that there is hope. And so I'm incredibly proud to be anybody's way out of darkness. And will continue to do so. But now, when I hear those sentences, it'll put a smile on my face instead of that nicking of my soul that I always, always felt. But I am not my illness. I will maybe never be fully cured of my chronic migraines. And that's okay. Just because I'm not going to be doing these videos or talking about it on a daily basis doesn't mean I won't be thinking about it on a daily basis. Doesn't mean that my way that I live my life and approach my life and my health won't always have to do with the migraine. I don't think there'll ever be a day where I go out without thinking about my chronic migraines. Either thinking that, wow, I had a really good day. Wow, I'm having a bad day and I don't know why. What did I do to my head? How can I take better care of myself? Making doctor's appointments, going for my routine Botox. It will always be a part of my everyday life, but it won't be the focus of my everyday life. And that is profound to me in so many ways and I feel this profound emotion. It's bittersweet sort of. And I'd like to see who I am without that being the sole focus, just being a part of my life, not the focus of my life. And it's exciting and it's scary because I'm sort of shedding my old skin. And I don't know what the world looks like through a different kind of lens. But I'm going to do it anyway. And it's going to be amazing. I know that deep down. I know that. Just feeling all of the emotions in the world right now. But I wanted to thank you for following me on this journey. I will be sharing my new project with you hopefully very soon on this channel. Um, so there's a little hint. But 2021 is going to be my year, and I hope it is going to be your year, too, for all of the amazing things that life has in store for us. And all we have to do is be brave and try. And so that is what my fervent hope is for all of you, that you just try. Because you can get better, you can get healed, and you can move on. Thanks, guys.